What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Damn Every Project. Uh, this episode is with Tyler Kane. I've known Tyler Kane since the first grade, and uh, we went all the way up through graduating high school together and played football in high school together. And he went on to ULM to play football, and I went on to Louisiana Tech to pursue my education. And uh, we separated our ways there, but kind of we kept up with each other via social media and whatnot. But, uh, you know, Tyler is a. Uh, He's a grinder. He's a hard worker. Never say quit, never say die kind of guy. And uh, I've always respected that and uh, always seen the, the hustle and the grind in him. And, um, you know, he, he wrote a book not too long ago called Starting Point. It's on Amazon. I'll put a picture of it up right here. And uh, you should check it out. He, uh, it, it really challenges your way of thinking. And uh, we didn't really get to talk about it a whole lot because... I hadn't, I hadn't gotten the book yet. I hadn't read it, and uh, that was my bad. So I, I kind of screwed up there. But we we just go through Tyler's life and talk about his his struggles and his trials and tribulations, and uh, kind of w- a little bit about what makes him tick and and how he lives his life now. And uh, you know, he's just a he's a really humble, hardworking dude. Always has been, and I've always respected that about him. So um, yeah, as for me. Uh, you know, just uh, trying to grow the podcast and and continuing to run and push myself and uh, become a better person each and every day. And um, yeah, I got a bunch of stickers. I got about six or seven of these things. So hit me up on Instagram, Dan Dye Mabry. Um, yeah, I would really, really appreciate your subscription to this podcast. Um, on YouTube, and I really need some engagement. I need some comments. If some, if you, if you hear something that you like or think it's funny in this podcast, if you're listening to it while you're driving down the road, get on YouTube, leave a comment, say something. I want to hear it. Tyler wants to hear it. We all want to hear it. So uh, I would really like some engagement. And uh, yeah, just hadn't had any comments. So I'd love to see what you guys have to say about things. And I'm um, always looking for guests, so if you or somebody you know wants to come on, hit me up on Instagram. I'm always answering DMs there, and uh, yeah, just look out for me, because I'm coming. <laughs> All right, y'all, keep grinding. Much love. Tyler Kane. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, Tyler Kane. My man, Dan. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah, I've known Tyler since kindergarten, first grade, something like that, yeah, yeah. Caroli Elementary. Yeah. I, moved, I moved, I went to, started going to Caroli in first grade. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I moved from Dale High. Yeah. So you and Austin, and did you have a sister? Yeah, older yeah. sister. Yeah, She's that's what seven I thought. Years, like seven years old. Okay. About the same age as your brother. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we've known each other for a long time and I don't know, that's kind of where I want to start. I kind of want to run through your whole life if, if that's cool. Man, that's, that's <laughs> I, I want to run through my whole life. So for sure. For let's, sure. Let's do it. So like, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, I was thinking about it obviously for a week or so now leading up to this and like you and Austin were probably like a couple of the first black kids, like I became friends with, like yeah. real, to be honest, like. I think Michelle Miller like lived right down the street from me, <laughs> but yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, so I remember Michelle. I was too. thinking about her, and then and then you guys, and like maybe like Ivan Manning. And that was a little that, later. I was about to say, yeah, that yeah, was down the line. Grade, I think for sure. So like, uh, but yeah, you know, and obviously you and Austin were always uh, gifted athletes, and well, you know, obviously we went through Caroli and and then middle school and high school together, but I don't know, I just. Can you talk about, I mean, where you grew up and, and kind of 
you know, what school was to you and what athletics meant to you at that point in time and yeah, just so, kind of tell people where you come from. Like I said, when I first got there, that was first grade. Who'd you, who was your first grade teacher? Don't tell me. Miss Goodo? No, it wasn't, but I know I remember her. I had Miss Lane. It may have been Miss Goodo no more than I think I don't know. I, for, I think so. Yeah, but, yeah, so when I got there, like, we came from Dale High, of course. It was, okay. like, the low income. Like, when I – so when I moved to Dale, I was in kindergarten. I was five years old. When I, like, it was so scary. I used to have to, like, devise a plan to not get jumped on the way to school. <laughs> like, my first day when I moved to Dale, High, I was going to the candy store down the street. I was five years old. I was about to say. <laughs> as soon as I got my stuff, I walked outside. It was a group of kids waiting for me. They beat my ass. I just took off. This is five. Dang. So that's my introduction to Dale, High. But... Uh, like I said, went there every day. I was just looking to get home safe, get to get to school safe. Yeah, and I didn't learn shit. <laughs> so then we, my mom, she was like, "No, nah, we can't have that." Like, cause she knew how serious academics was and stuff like that. So for sure, we moved to West Monroe, and uh, we moved to Timbers. Uh, I think you know, are you know you know where Timbers was? For right? sure, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people used to pass by there. You had to get to the city. You had to pass by Timbers if you lived in West Monroe. For sure. But we moved there, and that was like heaven to us you know i was like oh my god like finally out of that jungle yeah and then we went to caroli and i just remember being in like uh remedial classes the first two weeks because i literally like they was they were talking about consonants and vowels i didn't know what the fuck that was yeah oh, i can curse Cam. <laughs> yeah for sure you're okay. good yeah and i didn't know what that was but uh yeah it was just a big culture shock to me just to get there and i was super uncomfortable at first because everybody just knew about all that and I was and I'm so competitive I always wanted to be at the top but long story short like once I got adjusted uh start making really good grades and like I said uh I I think uh going to Caroli was a big pivotal point in my life because I got a lot around a lot of like white people and white people's main focus is academics yeah. you know and that's what you need in life because I us as black people we tend to focus more on athletics instead of the mind. So I, I feel as though I got a great balance because I was already naturally athletic. I got a great balance of already using my athleticism and then toning it, you know, with the mental aspect of it. So I always tell people this, uh, going to a predominantly white school was the best thing that ever happened to me. And not because I put white people on a pedestal or even I put black people on a pedestal. You know, I just think we're all one race, you know, but I do, like I said, I do believe that predominantly white white people tend to focus more on, you know, academics, and that was, you know, especially back in the day. Yeah. And that was a big pivotal point in my life, so. I guess, and you, you mean that, like, strictly from, like, the school point of view? From the school, yeah, just, yeah, I'm yeah. glad you cleared that up. Because, the, because like, the, I mean, my I, and I'm not hating on anybody by any means, but it's just a fact, like, you, you then, your athleticism came out. And, I mean, obviously, you, you know, going to, like, Wolfba and all that stuff, like, that was very much a family deal. That was yeah. not – like, that was – you had the school's name on you or whatever, mm -hmm. but, like, that was all parents and stuff. Oh, definitely. And, like, I know that, like, I, you know, you come from a single mom and, mm -hmm. and it was just you and Austin and both y'all are always on the same team and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. I know, like, a lot of people helped y'all out, just, like, food and snacks and rides and all that definitely. kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I just – that's where my mind went whenever you started talking about that. Oh, yeah. But, but even that, too, uh, Branson Myers family. For sure. Uh, you, you yeah, know that's Branson exactly Myers. where my Larry mind Larry Green yeah. uh, changed my life. Uh, just showed me a different – he was one of the first millionaires I ever met. I mean, he would tell me, Tyler, like, I'm a, this is a million-dollar bus you're riding on. And it was just like, I'm like, a million dollars? You know, just to – most – most kids, you know, when they're growing up in poverty, can't even think a million dollars. Yeah. But even to have those thoughts on my mind, like, okay, this is, I'm riding on something that's a million dollars. He was a business owner. He just introduced me to a lot of things, you know, that I'm For appreciative sure. of. For sure. Um, so, I guess to, to step it back a little bit, you, you mentioned, like, moving from Delhi to Timbers, like, Delhi was a jungle, but, like, Timbers wasn't, like, a walk in the park either, was it? Nah, it wasn't, but... I had a lot of fights in Timbers, a lot of fights, but I needed it. You know what I mean? It was just, it just built me to be a leader. I just was, a, it just, it kind of made me into who I, who I am today. And I, I just, 
I just believe I'm like a strong, fierce guy. I don't take no shit, but I don't start no shit either. But I, I definitely sure. don't take it. Yeah. And uh, Timber's definitely. I built a lot of friendships. I, I was introduced to a lot of things. I kind of had to grow up a lot, a lot faster than most people. And not saying it was uh, New Orleans, the Ninth War, but at the same time, poverty is poverty, you know. So it just taught me a lot. I think uh, that my philosophy is that uh, nobody really has it better or worse than anybody, because even the richest kid, they might not know how to interact in the world you know when something happens to them just because it's like everything they've had everything yeah or the 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 poorest kid if he might not know how to interact in the corporate world just because he doesn't know but he's never been exposed to he's it. never yeah, been yeah, exposed yeah. to it sure. but I, if you if you if you make the most of what you have and you appreciate it and you just just tackle it and and, and do what you have to do it, each experience is is equal and, and i just want people to really understand that it's for all sure. for you so uh I guess when did when did football and and that did would track come first or did football come first? Football came first, and I didn't start playing football till I went to Caroli. Yeah, uh, I just I saw that they were having tryouts or whatever, and I just walked up. Me, my mom, and my brother walked up there. We didn't have a car, uh, and that's when we met Larry Green. And then ever since then, that first year we won the championship, and that kind of set me up to like meeting people, even at a young age, I don't know, it just set me up to meeting coaches who wanted me to play on their basketball team, man. Yeah. Track coaches who wanted me to run track. And through that, I met my best friends, Mike Hunter and Paul Turner. So, uh, yeah, it just, it just from from going to Caroli, meeting Coach Green, playing football, it just set me up on a path that that I'm, that I'm led me to where I am right now. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it, was a, it was a fun ride. That's and that's pretty is. wild that that you you walked up there like that's how it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? We walked, we walked, we cut through a little trail. We always went through, walked up there for sure. And yeah, it was a yeah. We didn't, we didn't. I didn't. I never saw anything wrong with it though. I just, I just felt like that's what that was just so normal, right? You know? it's right. Like, yeah, like like you say. I guess yeah. Just the struggle wasn't the struggle because it was just yeah. Normal. I didn't. I never it thought of it as a struggle. Like if. Now, my mom, she was a great mom. She she did what she had to do. But she used to work in Monroe, and she did hair. So we would have practice. Like, even when she did get a car, we would have practice. She'd have to drive back to West Monroe, take us to practice, drive back to Monroe, drive back to West Monroe, come take us from practice. I mean, get us, pick us up. Yeah. It was just a lot, you know. On, on, so a lot of people, like you said, used to help us picking us up and stuff like that. But at first, yeah, we didn't, we didn't have a car, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything. Yeah. It's right around the corner to so, us, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, it was. I guess it wasn't like you had to walk like 10 miles Right, or right, right. Like, some, you know, some people it was have a to couple, really but walk. <laughs> yeah. About two miles, that's it. Good yeah. exercise. Um, so, yeah, like you playing football all through elementary school, mm-hmm. and uh, did track start then, or did that start track, when? Track started then. Track started the first year after football. Yeah. When I met pa- that's when I met Paul, because we played, uh, and by the way, Paul Turner, the guy that I'm speaking of, if you don't know, Paul Turner is a guy that we, uh, well, you grew up with at in junior high on mm-hmm. up, and me from uh, probably nine years old on up. He was my best friend. He played. He was our quarterback, led us to the state championship, went on to play for Louisiana Tech, or LSU, then Louisiana Tech, and then Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. So that's who we're speaking of right now. For sure. But, yeah, that's when I met Paul and his dad, and Paul's dad was like a super – good dad structured dad had a very structured so i just got around some structure yeah and yeah. that kind of i knew what was next so i just went kind of went off his lead so whatever paul did that's what i did so paul went to track next so i went to track next paul went to basketball and that's kind of how my schedule got set up but yeah we uh after that we ran track we were ranked number three well number two in the nation at one point and then we we went to the Junior Olympics and won, got number three in the nation, and that kind of led to a lot of more opportunities as well. Uh, but yeah, that's how it started with the track and yeah. all the other sports and stuff like that. For sure. So, I mean, you won a bunch of championships in in football and mm-hmm. in elementary school, and then moved on to middle school, and I guess kept winning, huh? Yeah, we, yeah. I think we won. Under, no, we lost one game in middle school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we had high school and. Uh, 
Were you playing varsity freshman year of high school? You, well, back then they wouldn't let us play. All uh, right. But sophomore year, yeah, I was. Did you, did you get? Uh, did you, we didn't go to the dome that year. That was the freshman year. That was the varsity ink year. Yeah, that was the varsity <laughs> ink year, and uh, we lost the uh, I think second round. The yeah. second, we, you know, we always had that curse. Or whatever, I, uh, so. I'm hoping to get Zach Kirksey on here, and I'm definitely gonna bring up. You gotta bring that up. You gotta bring that up. Uh, hey, and I was so ready to get on that show. <laughs> I was so mad at them for losing. Man, they used sure. to give us so much stuff, so oh, much yeah. underarm and all that. Oh yeah. So I wasn't playing football that year. I didn't start Your playing until so, till sophomore year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and also something about freshman year at West Monroe. I thought about the other day. That was before the freshmen got separated. Like that was the the year, the last year that everybody was together, mm-hmm. and like everybody was intermingling and stuff. And I just thought about that the other day. It was kind of weird. Like. We'd, we would see the seniors and stuff yeah, walking around and the cameras and whatnot. I used to love high school, man. It was a, I loved it. It was, it a, was a trip for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we play football and, and go through all the football. And mm. I, I guess, I don't know, one story that I thought about was like y'all's apartment catching on fire at some point. Mm. When did that happen? And can I, I, want, I want to hear your side of it. And let me clear this up, by the way. So, <laughs> I definitely drug that story out <laughs> to get as much as I could get from everybody who was offering. Fair enough. My apartment. Oh, I got a story about that, too, whenever you get done with that. Go ahead. My apartment did not catch on fire. The apartment above us caught on fire, and we got the water damage from it. Okay. But because everybody at school was... So, I don't know if you know, but I was in band at the time. Okay. And they were, they thought my apartment caught on fire. Right. And they thought I lost all my stuff. So, they asked me, did I, did they want me to take, did they, did I want them to take up a donation? And I said, yeah. You know, so, yeah, because I was just telling them all my stuff got burnt down and stuff like that. So, listen, Amanda Terry and Mr. Phillips, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just a young man trying to get some new kicks. <laughs> I did not I did not think of it in any other way, but ultimately I just got a lot of water damage. Nothing serious happened. But Wasn't Austin there when it happened? Austin was there. Yeah. Austin was there and it scared man, it scared me so bad yeah. because it's, it was the day he, he just didn't come to school. Mm-hmm. And I got I don't know, somebody called me and told me told me that it was on fire and I just started panicking. Yeah. And then I ended up figuring out nothing really happened. Really, literally nothing really happened. <laughs> just a little water damage. And then we just got transferred to another apartment. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you talk about hustling. And uh, one day on Facebook, I think, or something, you put up like, yeah, every time I asked somebody for a dollar <laughs> in elementary school, like I was just taking that and saving, saving it, it. <laughs> for, for another pair of Jordans. Yes. Because I knew my mama damn sure wasn't going to buy <laughs> True story. True story. And I, I was promise. just like, man, I know I gave that man a dollar for some skills. Hey, a <laughs> lot of dollars, too. You, Morgan DeMoss, that's the, that's just who I remember, especially Morgan. I'm sorry, Morgan. I, I'm sure I was scaring the shit out of you every day. I didn't try to. I was just asking. I didn't mean it. But yeah, man, I used to every day, uh, especially at Good Hope, I used to just stand by the door at the concession stand. And now that I know how that looks, I know I was just being super annoying. But I didn't give a fuck because I didn't think of it like that. I just used to ask everybody for a dollar. Oh, you don't got a dollar? I'll take 50 cents. Yeah. Oh, you don't got 50 cents? I'll take that quarter. Yeah. And it just, I remember uh, I was doing it because I, I did want to get some new shoes, some Jordan 5s. They were, they were gray. And green, lime green. I remember like it was yesterday. And I, and this was during a time where the Rebel football games were going on. So at Friday nights, I was stacking up. I yeah. would leave with at least forty dollars, <laughs> at least, at least in two hours. So you know, I was thinking I was making a lot of money. But in about two weeks, maybe three, um, I had a big bucket full of change and dollars, and I went up to hit the sports, and my my Jordans were like one hundred twenty eight dollars, and I bought them. I think I did that twice. Wow. Yeah, man. I was twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I had to make it happen. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's that's all. That's I mean, it shows like your drive. Yeah, man, like from yeah. a from a young age. Yeah. Like, 
Um, I think if if you don't mind, it literally doesn't matter because I wouldn't do that shit now. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't I didn't even think that anything was wrong with it. Well, I was just trying to get what I wanted. I mean, my mind goes to like, especially in middle school, like in middle school, we're all so like blind to what the actual world's going on. Like, I think you had a lot of respect mm-hmm. just like because of your athletic ability and like you were helping us win uh, mm-hmm. basketball and football and everything, you right. know? And so, like, that's the man right there. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think people thought of it like you were you were bugging him. I think you were just – it was just you, know, you, like, you know, I don't know. Probably – and and I think I kind of knew that, too, yeah. at that time. And that's why I'm so, – I told my wife the other day, I was like, man, I'm so appreciative of my abilities that I had in life because otherwise – I. Like I don't I don't know if my life would have been had, would have gone so smoothly, like because I man a lot of stuff and also this is this that belief also kind of fucked me up when I got later in life because I literally depended on that and solely that it almost became like my like I don't I just depended on it way too much for sure we'll get into that later yeah yeah on. we'll get in that but yeah uh, yeah I definitely looked at it like that about uh. But uh, just being kind of respected, so I didn't think any, I didn't think I was really bothering anybody. I just yeah. thought everybody thought it would be funny. For sure, because a lot of people definitely told me no, yeah. plenty of times. Yeah, but yeah. Well, but then uh, you know, I guess that that also helped you develop something like being right. able to be rejected. Right, just, like, right. A salesman smiling yeah, about exactly, it and turning exactly. going to the next one. Just turning into a joke. So yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, we go through high school and uh, lost two state championships, won one. Right, right. Uh, and I mean, you were a part of all all three of those mm-hmm. trips, and um, I guess you know oh, some the only stat line that I share with you, um, top five scores our senior year was, I think you and Paul and Bubba Reeves mm-hmm. Bubba. and Dan Mabry, <laughs> yeah, because I had so many damn extra points yeah, because y'all scored definitely. so many touchdowns, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, so yeah, I like to I like to brag about that. Hey, sometimes. brag, man! <laughs> Shit, that's points. We need those points. <laughs> uh, it's always funny to think about being a kicker in high school. Man, y'all but, had to, y'all had to dream day. No car practice. Come in, seem like when y'all wanted to leave when you wanted man, to. Man, I remember one day we spent the whole day at the football field, and most everybody else was at the practice field, and everybody came down to the game field for <clears throat> for one day for like the end of the practice. And, Somebody got in a fight in the practice field or something, and end of practice, Coach Sanders like, everybody line up on the sidelines. I remember that. And we had to run <laughs> back and forth a couple of times, and me and Bo were just like, man, we don't even know. We didn't even get to see what right. happened. Like, <laughs> they wasn't involved bullshit. at all. Yeah. yeah. That's Coach Sanders for you, dog. You for know sure. he care. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> so we graduate high school, and uh, I guess you – know, well, I know you had track, track in high school as well. Mm-hmm. I mean – uh, you continued to stack up some accolades there as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, what are you talking about in basketball? Well, I mean, uh, high school track. I mean, for West Monroe, you won yeah, a we, state we, championship we, or two. Uh, we went to state. I never, I never won state. Okay. But I think we got third in state, or I know we won regionals. Yeah. Believe it or not, I actually was a district. Well, I played second in district in high jump. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> my uh, my sophomore year. So yeah, I had a couple. I did a couple things in track, but nothing, yeah. nothing too major. Like and no then, state championship. Yeah. So you mentioned basketball and went to. I know we went to ULL a couple times. Uh huh. Yeah. Basketball team. Uh, we went to the top twenty-eight. Uh, I think we went to the Sweet Sixteen or whatever one year. But uh, yeah. After that was my sophomore year, and I didn't play after that because. They just used to kind of make it hard for you to play football and basketball at the same time, especially if you were a good football player. They wanted you to work out during the off season, so I kind right. of sacrificed that to work out to yeah. pursue football. Yeah. So, uh, I guess you want you you decided senior year you wanted to continue to pursue athletics in college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I actually had a um, an academic scholarship as well to ULM. Until a couple other schools. Uh, yeah, that, I guess that's really what my question is. Like, why did you choose ULM? Why did you choose football at ULM? Like, that's a great – man, that's a great – so ULM offered me my junior year, at the beginning of my junior year. Uh, then – but I, I was like, I'm not going – you know how we thought about no – just doubt. being from the city, we 
back then we didn't even no nope, I'm sure nobody even went to a ULM game no, football games more, really. there were more people at our high school games than the ULM game so that was just a school that was off my list I wasn't I just wasn't going there I was being a little arrogant you know uh and then it ended up being that that was one of my only offers so uh I signed there I was actually mad because I did not want to be there and now that I think about it, I'm like, man, you really were mad about a full scholarship. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, and it's yeah. just like, what? And I, and I, but I didn't realize, I didn't even appreciate my full scholarship until my junior year. And it was one day, I remember like it was yesterday. This girl was in front of me. We were in the bookstore and she couldn't really pay for her books. Or she had to, no, she had to pay for her books. And it was like $1,300. And I was like, what? <laughs> Thirteen hundred dollars, like you gotta pay for that. And then I just walking out, like man, like I've been looking at this so wrong. Like yeah. thank you so much for, because I know I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have been able to be there, uh, especially without struggling a lot with stacking up loans and stacking up a lot of debt if it wasn't for you know uh, that scholarship. So yeah, it, it definitely that for, that scholarship changed my life for sure, for sure. Um, so were you did you immediately become a part of the offense or Yeah. So when I first got to ULM, they were sending me they were just saying that I was gonna revive the program. Uh that was a lot of talk around the uh program and I when I first got there I already knew uh from the get go that I was gonna be the starting punt return. Like he let me know before I before practice or yeah. anything. Uh, man, actually I really wasn't ready, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I was uh Mentally, physically, I was ready. Mentally, I wasn't. Yeah, that was about the question I was going to ask. Yeah, physically, I was ready. I was strong. I was fast. I was that. I, I was my the ability was there, but mentally, I wasn't because I had it from a from a young age. I had a this belief that because someone was way bigger, that that somehow I, they would hurt me. I don't know, and maybe that be, came from. When I was getting jumped at five years old, and it was just a belief that I had, but I didn't figure this out till probably a year ago, two years ago. But I just went there with this belief that because they were way bigger, that somehow that I'd had to like not go as hard. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely some type of subconscious belief there that was making yeah. me not just go as hard as I wanted to, not break through that wall. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't know. It just. I wasn't, I lost my confidence. Yeah. And that was always my superpower, my confidence. And uh, if I didn't have that, I just wasn't myself. And then, but I didn't understand that. So I will start blaming myself. And yeah, that just kind of led to a downhill spiral my freshman year. And I ended up tearing my ACL. Uh, I, but, I, but like you said, I was in, uh, back to the question, I was inserted into the offense pretty fast. And uh, but like you said, I just I just wasn't ready that year at all at all. So so how'd you tear your ACL? Actually, I was on a punt return. I was returning a punt uh, against Western Kentucky. Uh, it was actually my longest punt return of the year, and I it was crazy. This is this is a crazy thing. Before that game, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm about to play my game. Like I don't care." I started getting more plays in the offense and everything. It's just crazy how when you make your mind up, stuff will change for you. Literally, because sure. you got to make your mind up. But uh, yeah, I got into the offense and I caught a punt. I was doing my go-to move and my knee just—I heard it pop. It was the loudest thing in the state, and I just—I I fumbled the ball. But I'm like, oh, I can't fumble it, you know, because I was a, a freshman. I just did—I was just always making mistakes. I was getting in trouble a lot. Uh, well, not getting in trouble. I just missed class a lot. I just used to try to beat the system. Yeah. And that shit did not work. In, it. I, I tried to bring the same Tyler from high school to college, and it just didn't work. Because at West Monroe, I got, I got away with a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah. So As a lot of the star football players did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got away with a lot. Yeah. So, you know, and it just did not work. It didn't work in college. And I paid for I, I, it. I must tell a quick story about yeah, go ahead, uh, <laughs> high school of fo football players in high school. So I took a music appreciation with Mr. Odin. I remember that. And, uh, Me too. Mingo and – other running back, I can't Abrams. Remember. Yes, Dez. Yes, Dez Abrams were in there, and Dez skipped class like three or four different times. And one time he walked in, and Mr. Odin just called him out. Was like, like Markevius is here. Yeah. He was like, Why can't you be here? 
He's like, oh, I got blah, blah, you know, whatever excuse. He's like, just because you're a football player does not mean you're going to get any kind of grade in my class. Yeah. He just, like, went off on him. I, I just, something that always stuck out in my head. But Yeah, that's a first, me hearing that. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely. Uh, we definitely. Well, I'm not going to make it seem like we got away with murder. My main thing was I used to skip class a lot. Yeah. Like, that's just what I did. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it took me on to college. But in college, they had people checking classes. And I was running after practice a lot. Just wasn't disciplined yeah. at all. And, uh, yeah, it kind of – that led to my downward spiral in college. And I didn't pick that up until about my junior year. Yeah. So, uh, you tear your ACL mm-hmm. and what, have surgery, rehab. Yep. yep. Start to try to build back and get back for next season. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, once I tore it, I never had a thought that uh, this I'm not going to come back from this. It was kind of like a cha- – I like challenges. Yeah. I'm just a person who embraces it. So, I was like, you know what? They say I'm coming back in eight months. I'm going to make it four. Like, that's that's the type of mindset I had. And, I mean, uh, let me ask you this. Did you, did you have a down day? Did you have a down week? Like Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I had um, – Especially that I tore my ACL, ACL twice. Right, leg. right. But that first one, I had a lot of down weeks because I just wasn't where I wanted to be sometimes. And it was so frustrating because it was another running back that we had. His name was Centarius Donald. He was huge. He tore his ACL too, and he was recovering so much faster than I was. And I just did not understand. But ultimately, uh, I remember I was ready for camp, and it was like the best camp I ever had. So – it, it all worked out, yeah. yeah. And then next year, it was a pretty decent year for me. I, I still wasn't mentally ready because I had a lot going on. This was the time I had my second child. So, uh, yeah, I kind of messed up again that year on the field just because I'll be in the games, not even at the game. I'll be thinking about so much other stuff during the game. And, yeah, so. But, yeah, after that, ACL definitely was a – Yeah. It wasn't just, uh, you know, peaches and ice cream every day. It was right. definitely some hard right. times. Yeah. So, you stayed healthy that year? Yeah, I did stay healthy that, that year and for the, for two for two years after that. Junior first year? ACL. Yeah. You're still good? And yeah. Man, any – how how the season go for you? Junior year was a a pretty big year for me. Uh, that's when I was I was starting kick return. Uh. I was playing running back and I was playing slot. They had a lot of plays in me for the offense, but it still wasn't what I was used to because I wasn't getting the ball. I felt as though enough, but I also understand why it, and it was all on me is because I still wasn't, my mind was, wasn't focused on football like that. It was just, I had a, I was cutting hair. I was in a fraternity. I was majoring in finance. I had two kids. I just was trying to still go to every party and I was drinking and smoking and, you know, just uh, a lot. I was just doing a lot at the time, you know. So football was pro- – and I was working out and still had practice. You know, it was just a lot going on. And I just – I thought football was my number one, but when I really, really boiled down to it, it was like number four or five on my list. So, yeah. <clears throat> when did you start cutting hair? When I was 12 years old, really? uh, yeah, and uh, I used to charge like two dollars and fifty cents, if that, if I ever got paid. Most times I didn't get paid. I just, you know, now I wouldn't. I used to be kind of afraid to like approach people. I don't know what it was, man. If someone owed me something, I would be scared. I would be afraid to approach them and ask for it. Yeah. But if you didn't owe me anything, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mind. I don't care. I just. I just have a thing where. I don't know. I just. It was weird for me. I used to give a lot and be a, and and kind of not. If I gave it to you, I just didn't want to ask you for something. I just wanted you to give it to me instead of me like, well, can I have it now? I just wanted you to. And if you didn't give it to me, I wouldn't ask for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but but other than that, I would be fine going up to you and ask for money. It was I was a little I was weird. I still am. So so yeah. uh, I mean that's obviously still something. I mean I know you cut your own hair. Mm-hmm, yeah, and like so it's still a part of your life. You cut your Cut your kids hair, mm-hmm. I imagine. Yeah, I actually I started that, and that's what uh when I was after college, uh, I don't know if people go, no, I didn't get to play my senior season. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. I want to get into that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll just jump into that. So senior year, how many games did you make it in? I didn't make it into any. Okay. Uh, I didn't make it into any games uh, because that year before, 
uh, well, the summer before, during camp, I tore my ACL the first day of camp. I retore it. Man. But I didn't think I tore it. But it, when I got the test, I did. So, uh, but this time around, I was just, I wasn't mad. I was just kind of confused. But I instantly went to like, okay, something big is going to happen from this. Like, what, what is this going to be? So, this must mean I'm about to come back. Uh, my story's going to be he's tore his ACL twice. Look at him now. You can't even tell. You know, that yeah, was just, yeah. that's just what my mind always goes to when something seemingly that's supposed to be bad happens. I just right. go to the, the next best possible, like, okay, something, something's amazing about to happen out of this. And usually 90% of the time it does, you know, uh, pretty actually 100% of the time it does, to be honest with you. Well, let's say 99. Let's just be on the safe side. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I tore my ACL, then I was practicing. I came back, I rehabbed. I actually rehabbed my own, because I started doing a lot of research. Um, this is where at a time where I'm, I I got married, I was married. Uh, I had finally decided like, I'm done with all that stuff that wasn't serving me. Um, I just started, I got myself back together. You know, I stopped going out. I just uh, stopped cheating on my girlfriend at the, well, she was my girlfriend before that, but at the before I got married to her, I made a vow to myself, and I did that for like a year that I wasn't gonna step out of anything. Uh, and then my life just started getting back in back in order, and then uh, I tear my ACL, like you said, and uh, I pr- I practice and I rehab on my own. I come back better than ever, uh, but I'm still not a hundred percent. Actually, when I did spring. Uh, the doctors told me that not to do it. But I knew, I was like, man, this is my last year. I got to. And we had new coaches, too. I was like, I got to put some good stuff out there just so they know who I am. Yeah. So I was like 60% out there. I was number five on the depth chart at running back just because I was, you know, they didn't know. I was just hurt. Right. About a week later, I was number one on the depth chart. Uh, and I was just like battling every day, every day. Because my knee was not 100%. I couldn't play like I really wanted to, but. I was just putting it all on the line because I kind of knew that my year wasn't guaranteed, but I, I figured that it was just because of how everything added up. Cause I only got to play really two full seasons at ULM. Uh, so I just, I just kind of knew that they were going to grant it for me. But then, uh, like I said, we went through that, went through, had a great spring, had a great fall camp, great fall scrimmage. And we, we're getting ready to go into the season. We're going to play Southern University out of Baton Rouge. And uh, it's Friday, the day before the game. And uh, we're getting ready to go. It's in the morning, so we're getting ready to go through pregame. You know, all that stuff, eat with the team, all that stuff. So uh, I get a call from the head coach, and he sa- he tells me, uh, like, Tyler, yeah, the NCAA denied your request or whatever. And – this is a request for for another year for my for my so it'll have been a, it's called a medical red shirt right because I didn't so I got hurt my senior year right before the senior season and since I got they were trying oh and you were out okay yeah, yeah, yeah so you're out I didn't even get to season. yeah I didn't even get to do anything my senior season I traveled with the team I went on all the trips and stuff like that gotcha but I couldn't play so they were just trying to get me reinstated for the next year right because I didn't get to play my senior, senior year and yeah the NCAA denied it. So, uh, did you ever get any explanation for that? I didn't get an explanation for for it at all. Like, uh, I remember the athletic, uh, the uh, I forgot his, I forgot what his title is. The compliance office. Yeah, they just called me in and told me and gave me a hug, a weird, awkward hug, and and I was like, I was like, sorry, man. I said, okay, I got you. But I didn't, I didn't blame. I, you know, it was. Sorry, I didn't. I know, right? I didn't blame anybody or anything. I just was. I just didn't understand at the moment. I was like, I was more so talking to God. I was just like, so I mean, what what is going on? Like this now. Usually I know. Like yeah. Usually I got a great, a good, good picture. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Something. But this time I was like, you taking football away from me, man? Like I got mad, like. Football? Like, yeah. nah, this can't. So then, so I'm like, nah. That's, this is what saved me. Like, yeah, like, this is what's got me everything. Yeah. Kinda. Which, again, football was actually becoming a god of mine. But I didn't know. 
Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Because if foot like football used to control my, if I had a bad practice, like a bad practice, my my night would be ruined. You know, like a bad game. My, my freshman through sophomore year. Good thing I'm a mentally strong person because if I I was I was depressed. I just didn't know it. Yeah. Because I didn't accept it. You know, I was just mm-hmm. like, I can't. I'm t- I can't be depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all my actions showed that I was depressed. Yeah. And I, but I just did not know. You know, because I I just I don't know. I was just kind of I'm a pusher. You know, and kind of and that's what led to. I think when you're in that state, that low energy state of like depression and fear. You're constantly living that. Your life is going to show. You're going to, uh, especially if you're not used to living in that state, you're going to see some things show up, like, to give you, like, a a reminder to get back on track. And I was getting a lot of those reminders, man, a lot. But, like I said, at a young age, I didn't have much. Me and my mom weren't even really talking at that time due to some decisions I made. You know, I, I do have two kids at the time. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, my mom's. A golden child, basically, and I'm the one who has the the typical lifestyle of the 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 environment that he grew up in. Like, yeah, I had a child at 18. I had two kids by 19. No matter how smart I thought I was, or I was I was literally living the exact same life that I grew up around. Uh, just a, just a little different, but the circumstances were the same. Just with kids, I I mean, I mean, cause I don't have any money. Yeah, not like that. Uh, so that was, I know she was pretty disappointed and I understand now. I really didn't understand at the time, but yeah, it was just a, a crazy time going, you know, just, just around then. But like I said, it, it definitely, uh, it definitely molded me and, uh, and made me into who I am now. Like, yeah. I appreciate him so much. So. For sure. So you get that notice and you, you keep hanging with the team. You keep where you, you kind of separate yourself and start I separate, trying. I separated myself like. And the crazy thing is they wanted me to come coach at ULM. And that's usually what most people do. Like, after football, okay, yeah. I'm about to just go coach. But I knew that shit. I knew it wasn't for me. I just – and plus, I was so – I wasn't even mad. I was embarrassed because I just – that whole year I was posting. Or that whole, like, over the summer I was posting, like, yeah, this is my – this is the year. Like, come out and see me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, because this is – I just knew it was like I had my confidence back. I just was so ready. I used to my motto or my like every every day before I went on a, to a game like I'm about to put on a show because I really wanted to put on a show for everybody in the crowd. I wanted you to get some oohs and ahs, you know, when you came to see me play. So that was my biggest thing was just you know putting on a show. Let me ask you something. So I may it might may be wrong. Maybe you have a different time on here. I feel like that's the time where I saw Kurt check. Definitely, definitely, man, and that's. That's amazing that you even brought that up because I definitely still call myself that. But it's just so amazing that when I was 15, 14, 15, when I was calling myself that, I didn't really know what I was meaning because every time I did call myself that, I would literally go into, like, think I'm like, yeah, I'm about to. I remember one time we were lifting weights and Tanner Wyatt, I could not get the – I could not power clean this weight. And Tanner was like, come on, Kurt Check. And I just – you know, I was just like – you know, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I just, yeah, it just gave me like, it was like my alter ego, you know. So yeah. I had to definitely. That's when I started to get back to that uh, around that time where mm-hmm. I was like, and Kurtzak was just. If anybody doesn't know, that's the gorilla from Tarzan, the dad that doesn't like Tarzan, the very strong, aggressive, you know, gorilla, and uh, and it's I just always wanted to embody that kind of energy, just like the leader of the pack. Maybe not Kerchick energy exactly because he was kind of mean. Yeah. But just that powerful leader, you know. And, yeah, I was uh, definitely at ULM. I was definitely a leader. I was definitely getting back to my own, my swag, my, you know, my my identity. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, it's kind of what happened. There. Yeah, and then it's kind of ripped away from me. To some yeah, degree. yeah, yeah. But for it. I, I got I got what I needed from that experience. Yeah. I, I at least got to – I saw a lot of things change at ULM that last year from when Coach Bearder came in, amazing coach. I got to get coached by an NFL running back. He literally brought out the beast in me. He made me not afraid to do anything. And uh, I appreciate that. Alan Ricard, I really appreciate him for that. Super Bowl champion, fullback for the Baltimore Ravens. He also played at ULM as well. But, yeah, I just – the spring game – 
And plus, I took every day as like it was a game. Every practice was a game to me in my mind. So most people, I'm not going to say most people, I don't know what they would feel, but maybe they would be a little bitter about it because they didn't actually get to play the real games. But I took I took every day as like a a, a game, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I got a lot of I got a lot from it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, like no bitterness, no regrets whatsoever. For sure. So you you kind of separate yourself. You you cutting hair full time. Is that kind of like the grind? Like you promoting yeah. that kind so of deal? So I got my degree in business, and that was the biggest thing for me. Was okay. What do I do now? Do I? I mean, you don't have any student debt. None, none. And I was like, hmm. They gave me a they, ULM. They continued to pay me every month. I think I was getting like eight hundred dollars a month. So that was like for four more months. Yeah, you know, like thirty two hundred dollars. So I had that, but I also had from we uh when we were in college, we had a five bedroom house with me and my roommates, and they moved out. So and then I moved my family in. So I was like, hmm, I don't know how I'm gonna afford this. <laughs> yeah, but and I was I was scared. I was like. You know, I gotta. Go. I think I'm gotta go get a job, but I knew that was a a fearful thought, and I don't I don't like to think from that state. So, and that's what it's a hard thing, man. Like, but I had a lot of knowledge to back up why I should not make a decision from that state. So I decided to just go hard with my haircutting business. Uh, I just started posting like crazy, and I actually told my wife, I was like, man, listen, don't worry, I promise I got you. And uh, she, I was like, you, you're not going to have to worry about nothing. I, I told her that in 2016, like November. And uh, when I said that, I just started reading a lot, meditating a lot, just became so spiritual. Like, yeah, I didn't was, talk to it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask, like, when when all that started. It, so. it really started uh, after I tore my ACL the second time. Yeah. Uh, well, I bet, and that's kind of, I guess that's whenever I saw you start to, like, voice voice some of that stuff. Yeah. You know, it was, it started out real slow, but. You know, the more you think about it, like you, you were in that dark spot, kind of to to put a label on it, and yeah, definitely you, dark spot. Though you were yeah. looking, you were looking to to better yourself, right? And, and you knew, I guess you at that point you had realized that football wasn't the answer exactly. anymore. So exactly, and that's when I started to, uh, like I said, I kind of went down this spiritual path, uh, whatever, however you want to call that or label it. But uh, I just started reading a lot, started like uh, doing a lot of soul searching, a lot of research about the powers of the mind and and just I just wanted to formulate my own opinion of how or who I believe God to be or whatever you want to call it yeah I don't want to you know offend anybody uh it but that just led me on a journey and I remember you said I was posting a lot of stuff I was actually afraid to post stuff like that at first because it was like bro who are you to be telling this you know saying all this stuff yeah and uh i that was something i had to get over too i was like man like who cares you know like if it helps it helps if it hurt you know if if you don't like it just don't read it yeah and uh i'm glad i stuck with it because through that i've helped and it met a lot of people and everything so yeah, it's that that journey definitely started around after I tore my second my ACL the second time. Uh, did you start to did you start your like vegetarianism at that point as well? Yep. Uh, my last year in college, I was a vegetarian. I didn't let anybody know though because I didn't want uh, the coaches. I knew a lot of people, were, especially them, uh, and where we were in the deep south. People didn't really understand that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, imagine that was like a challenge on the road. Oh man, a big challenge! I remember uh, the first game. Well, actually, I was hurt. So, but even then, uh, when I did travel with the team, Fair I enough. just used to have to eat sides. Yeah. And I, just, <laughs> in the, and I wasn't even uh, the vegetarian that I am today. Yeah. So it was definitely harder for me back then, just to you know stick to it and stay disciplined. Yeah. But yeah, I did it. So. Yeah, and that, that's still something that you yeah, practice yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a. Uh, Going on four years now. I'm not – see, when I – I haven't eaten any meat in four years. Uh, For one time, for I think in 2000 – No fish. No nothing. fish, nothing. Okay. So, in 2017, I was completely vegan. No, 2018, I was completely vegan. But that didn't work for me because I like cheese. Uh, So, I just started to – I that's why I don't like to put labels on it. Because I will eat meat if I – want want it but i just don't want it I, you know i don't have any type of urge craving to eat it uh, my wife eats fish 
occasionally. Yeah, that's but, what I was going to ask if, if your family. Yeah, my, my family, my wife is pretty much vegetarian for the most part, but she will eat fish every now and then. I a haven't little had, pescatarian action. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I haven't had fish since 2016. Yeah, but she eats it every now and then, but she doesn't cook. We don't have any meat at our house. Gotcha. But my my children do eat uh, chicken and fish. Okay. So, yeah. Um. Uh, do you take any supplements to supplement anything or, or no nah, and i hope no doctors are watching this <laughs> and like man i know that guy might be really messed up but <laughs> i don't see with me i don't to be honest i don't really even depend on food for my supplements i i really think everything is energy based okay. and i think once you i think if you're at a high vibratory state mentally spiritually physically you know just in which all combine to equal your uh, vibratory state or your vibratory frequency. I think if you're at that state, I think there is no disease can live in your body anyway. So there's really no need to mon like monitor what you eat, I, you know, or what you take. So I've been pretty healthy. Uh, I haven't. But I don't I mean, even. You say it, it doesn't matter what you eat, but I'm sure you eat really clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and I, that's why I want to say that lightly. Uh, I do eat clean because that's I mean that's something that I I believe as well. Like if you're clear mentally and physically, like in a good headspace, and yeah. and you know I've been running a whole lot here yeah. recently and just feeling great and and I I'm totally with you. Like if you're a healthy individual mentally, physically, and spiritually, like it it's gonna be hard for you to get sick. Yeah, like, you can you, eat what the fuck you want. Like yeah. it, I just think a diet is a way to kind of avoid sometimes for some people avoid the real inner work it's like okay i'm gonna just do this diet it's gonna make me a better person well it might make you look better and feel better but ultimately the real work is you know the inner work and really if you do the inner work and you start to become who you are and realize stuff you'll naturally go to the foods that are best for you anywhere that you you know you'll just automatically like you know what maybe i shouldn't have that today yeah Cause you'll be, you'll, for one, you're gonna start working out. Right. You're gonna start like look, liking how you look and liking how you feel. You're not gonna want to mess that up. It's just like a win-win when you when you go within. You know? Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> so it. it's just, I don't know. It's just like first, you should. I, I believe people should just go within and and meditate and and just you know be a good person in general. Just be nice to people and be thankful for what you have. And through that you'll figure out a lot about what you need to do and not the opposite way, you know, not figuring out what I need to do, what I need to do. what I, And then you thinking that's going to bring the happiness and success that you want. There's a much easier way to do this. So I like it. Yeah, I man. like it. Uh, so, you, you know, you get back to hustling, cutting hair and, I guess you were able to afford your wife to be able to start yeah, a business. I actually as well? never, I didn't, I never elaborated on the cutting hair like like I wanted to. Uh, yeah, so I started when I I started cutting hair. I started posting on social media a lot. Well, uh, and what I thought was cool is, and I mean, it's marketing one on one. You were, you know, you were charging twenty bucks or whatever, but then you charge twelve to ULM student or, or high school student. Exactly, like, exactly. That kind of so stuff. I started getting a lot of. I was cutting everybody's hair on campus, basically. All the football team at ULM, all the basketball team at ULM. And this, so this house that you're talking about, you're talking about the house that... Yeah, the uh, five-bedroom. Right. There's five bedrooms, three full baths. It was like a dream house of mine. And it's right across the street from the from the, the university. Yeah, and from a mansion that I got to see every day. I was about to say, I, I've wanted to ask you this since the day. So, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, me and Tyler met up and, and we did a little podcast type yeah, situation yeah. and Tyler was trying to fill some stuff out and I guess nothing ever really came of that yeah it just it wasn't the time for it that's yeah. fair I was forcing I was just trying to I'm glad we did it yeah but yeah it just didn't work out. I mean it, it kind of it started sparking in me to start mm -hmm. doing this but <clears throat> yeah so I, I roll up to your house and realize where you live and like you say you, you literally live across from a castle yeah like Eddie Hakem's yeah. castle and I, I went away from that like saying all right, I I understand why this man hustles so hard. Mm -hmm. Cause every day when he walks out of his front yard, he sees. Look what, at what I'm looking at. Yeah, I can't, and I see him passing with the uh, I eight BMW or whatever. <laughs> yeah. At night, in the the light blue, it's like I, and plus, that was just so much motivation. I didn't I, I didn't need anything else. Like, yeah. 
we used to say we used to sit out every day like that's exactly how I want my garden to look. He had the most beautiful garden ever. Uh and it's just like I actually delivered him some uh my wife, uh I know you asked about my wife business. She has a she had a business, catering sweets business. We took him some sweets and stuff over there. They didn't answer, we just left it in front of the door. Hopefully it didn't melt or anything. But <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to, you know, talk to him. I never got to talk to him, but I'm sure eventually we'll meet. Yeah, again. for yeah. sure. <laughs> I, I believe I definitely believe that. Yeah. Uh, oh, and by the way, the house that I was living in was the house that he raised his family in. So that was their first house, you know, that I, that I was in. So, yeah, they still have their uh, the heights of, you know, the yeah, suns and yeah, stuff on yeah. the wall. So, yeah, it was. It was yeah, I know was, Joseph. One of, one of yeah, I remember sons, you said so. that was that was your uh, you knew him very well. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, I guess you how long were you in Monroe after you I st- after you quit? So that was playing football. Two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I started that cutting hair business. I was making pretty good money uh, a week, especially in Monroe, you know. So, uh, and yeah, I wasn't I mean, sp- obviously working for yourself on yeah, your own time. Yeah, my and- own time. It just showed me how to uh, manage my time, which I, I was very good with time management just from playing football all those times. But it just taught me how to be my own boss, not be afraid to raise my prices when I knew my work was, uh, was uh, well worth it. Uh, well, and it was just like, all right, it's Sunday. I got two hours off. If you want your haircut, it's forty bucks. This exactly, time, right? exactly. Sometimes, man, uh, I'd be making uh, sixty, yeah, eighty. Shout out to Mingo one time. He gave me, I, he gave me a lot one time. I don't know <laughs> what it was. He was just like, keep the change. I was like, okay. You need anything else, Mingo? But yeah, man, it was. Uh, yeah, I was doing very well. And like I said, uh, I had to growing up where I grew up. Uh, all, as soon as we got paid, we used to always we just uh, program to go to the mall. Yeah. I used to always find myself in the mall, and uh, my money just wasn't growing like I wanted to wanted it to grow. And of course, because every uh, two hundred dollars and sixty dollars that 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 adds up. So uh, around that time, I wasn't spending anything. Like I wasn't buying anything. My if my wife wanted. You had to really need it if you were gonna get it, you know. And it was just, but it it, it taught me how to. I stopped buying clothes every year. At West Monroe, I was I was voted best dress. I don't know just yeah. to let everybody know. Yeah. But uh, and that was like a ma- fashion is like a, a thing for me. I love clothes. I love shoes. And it just I had to sacrifice, man. Like I had my family. I had two kids now. Uh, 2018 or 17. I ended up uh, having my third child. Uh, so yeah, I just made sure that I stacked my money. My wife was doing really good. I was basically coaching her on how to grow her business and the mind and all that type of stuff. So we were doing really, really well. We had a, uh, found me and Dion Fowler and my, one of my other best friends, Tyree Hollins. We had a bike drive we did for three years straight every year, getting kids bikes, uh, low income neighborhood, so grew every year. It grew every every year. First year, I think we had ten bikes. Next year, we had fifty. The next year, we had like eighty plus bikes. Uh, next year, this year is going to be even bigger, For which sure. will be our fourth year. Uh, I plan on purchasing this year a lot more bikes. I remember my thing was I was like, I didn't get to purchase a lot, uh, but I got to raise a lot of money for it. But I know this year, I remember I said in like 2019 was the year that I was going to be able to purchase a lot of those bikes. So uh, You're saying this is something that you, you spoke about? That I spoke, about. that I spoke about, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am this year, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's something we can dive into for sure is the whole uh, speaking into things. And, and uh, I guess you, I've seen it with your son. Mm-hmm. You know, you seen you get him to to write lines and yeah, stuff. Like, I, I will be a millionaire mm-hmm. by the time I'm thirty. I will own five houses by the time mm-hmm. I'm thirty. Like, and that, that's something that I've I've like I've been battling myself. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, did you? I'm just gonna throw it out there. Did you see that from the secret, or did you? Did that something that you just found out about? No, the secret is where I got that from. Yeah, the secret is the first thing that I watched that made me be like. Okay, I knew it. Like, yeah. I knew because I always knew, like from a young age, I knew. I always, like I said, uh, I've always felt like I had a connection with God. 
But that connection came through football because I used to pray to win and pray to score, and I used to always win. I used to always score. So I just thought God loved me more than he loved us. Like, I just thought I had so much favor. But it was such a conditional love, like, for God. Because if I didn't do good in a football game, I thought God was punishing me. Yeah. Like, literally, like, if I didn't score on the first play, run of the game, I was just like, like, God, like, what's going on? You yeah. Know? Literally. So um, it was just – it was it was uh like I always believed that growing up uh, I always had like high energy and I always knew like thoughts or you know you can attract things because things used to always just come to me but I just didn't understand it I didn't have the and I'm a, a analytical person so I like the science behind it like yeah. give me the science and then I'll believe you right like I do believe a lot of the uh that well scientifically is right brain emotional talk like it'll happen when you see it it'll come but Ultimately, everybody needs some science to make that belief stronger. For sure. You know, some, sure. some facts. Some Okay, two plus two is four. You know, it, we need to see that. And uh, to, the secret kind of gave me that introduction to the two plus two is four. And it just made me, like, realize, like, hmm. And when I, when I heard about it, I'm just the type of person, if I hear about a good workout, I'm going to do it now. Like, I'm going to well, maximize see, it. I, I, and I think I've seen you, you recognize that as well as, like, you said something about it one day. It's like, uh, you know, maybe the law of attraction isn't everything because you still have to do it or something. You said something along those lines. And I guess that's more of my line of thought is like, and it's because of like doing this and just Mm -hmm. like, you know, going from doing nothing to the whole 1% a day thing. Like you do get better 1% a day every day. Like things are going to, and, but you know, I guess it, the whole the secret part of it really is a part of it as well, just because it, it ingrains you to think about whatever you want. And so you're, you're more focused on get, getting that and, and, you know, you know, putting myself out there. Hey, Tyler, will you come on the podcast? Hey, so-and-so, will you come yeah. on the podcast? Just like putting yourself out there, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit more and, and just pursuing like I'm, whatever I was you want. 10 more minutes more. away from you, you know, like yeah. that's law of attraction for sure. Like I've been wanting to do it. Yeah, that's true. Like, you as know what soon I'm saying? As I, I, Cause I didn't know, I knew you were over in this way, but I didn't know where you're at. And I was like, Hey, I'm staying in Arlington. You're like, I'm in Arlington. And I was just like, yeah, you know, oh, that's it. All right. And that's law of attraction. See, people think, some people think that law of attraction is going to bring them exactly what they want at that time. It doesn't work like that per se. It might. Yeah. But most times you'll just, be where you are and then someone oh you know you'll just have all the cooperative components you need to manifest what you want to do like how and it'll be in a in a harmonious way you won't have to go too far out of your you know out of your way like like how you said you texted me you didn't know that i lived in arlington no i could have been an hour i could have lived in dallas and yeah. like, and they couldn't couldn't have worked out for you right i wouldn't want to travel yeah an hour no doubt <laughs> but being that i wanted to do this too yeah i like it's I knew that you weren't going to be far away because I wanted to do it. And that's usually how everything works out for me. That's and, awesome. You know, so it's yeah, just, yeah. oh, he's 10 minutes away. Okay, that that's usually how everything works out for me. For sure. And it's just, like, I get, I don't know, and that's just kind of how the law of attraction works, you know, in my my opinion. But uh, also, I just want to give people a little, a little tip about that because I know a lot of people make the law of attraction seem like I just think about what I want and it's going to come to me the good thing is you do need to think about what you want, but not all the time. Most importantly, think about what you want. The, the, the thinking about what you want part is just to get you to sit down and think about what you want. Most people don't even think about what they want. If you ask them, they won't know. Like, which is nothing wrong with that. Someone asked me, uh, matter as a matter of fact, to go off subject. I'm getting coached by this guy named David Meltzer. Okay. Uh, he's a very... He has the number one sports marketing agency in the world. Two New York Times best-selling books. He has the number two life coaching business in the world. I actually DM'd him on Instagram, and he was like, about my book. And he was like, uh, yeah, how can I be of service? And now we're working together. This an influential guy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, wait, where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we were, I, I don't know. What I, what I thought about was, like, we were talking about, you know, if you don't know what you want to do, it's like along those lines, it's just like, I, you know, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, mm-hmm. yeah. like I, something I saw him the other day is like, you know, somebody's like, if you're, 
21, 23, whatever, like, you don't know what you do, like, what do you do? Like, mm-hmm. you got to go. You got to experience. And, oh, like, I know where I was going things. with this. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm glad you said Gary Vee because he just interviewed Gary Vee as well. Okay, wow. But, uh, yeah. But uh, he asked me, what do you want? And I was like, hmm. I said, but mine was different because what I want is really what I have already. I just want what I have to be maximized more. But I really have what I want yeah, at yeah. this moment. So it was kind of hard for me to answer that question because I was in a state of like, I really don't want anything else. You know, I was just, because I'm so, I'm so, man, I cannot stress to you, bro. I am so appreciative of where I am right now. But uh, yeah, the law of attraction, back, back to what I said, the law of attraction is just to make you figure out what you want, which is a, the most one of the most important things because some people go through life never decide, making a decision. The the best thing that we have that separates a human from a piece of grass, a plow, a flower, or a dog is that we have choices. We have the power of choice. Nobody else, no other species on this planet has the power of choice like we do. We can make daily decisions. Everybody else is just going throughout their day, like, you know, just dogs are just walking around. And, but we have the conscious ability to make a decision. And that's what the law of attraction wants you to do. Make a conscious decision about what I want, who I want to be, who I want to be with. Boom. Then after that, you don't focus on that all the time because if you're focusing on that, you're not focusing on what you have. You're actually focusing on what you lack. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, and if you're focusing on what you lack, you're going to get more of what you lack to focus on. So the thing, the key is, the trick is to focus on what you have and be appreciative of what you have. And then the law of attraction, since you're of, if since you're appreciative, it'll bring you more of what you want, more of things to appreciate. And I'm, I'm going to almost not guarantee you, but 90 percent of the time, it'll be similar to that thing that you envisioned in the past. So just a little tip to people to make their law of attraction success rate a little higher, you know. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe, you know, you have a big plan and. But you gotta realize that there's steps to getting there, yeah, there's and steps. and you may, the big plan may not be the actual plan. Like exactly, exactly. So it may be along those lines, but not yes. exactly. There's so many mean. detours along yeah. the, along the way, and I'm it's crazy. I'm such a young guy saying this, you know. For sure. But, uh, I grew up. I grew up early. Like, uh, I I, I consider uh, myself. Yeah, I mean, can, let's let's kind of talk about that. I mean, yeah, I know we we talked about it before we started, like. Mm-hmm. You know, you, your dad didn't come into your life till you yeah, were 15 I didn't, years uh, old? Yeah, I actually thought my dad was dead. My mom used to tell me my dad was dead. But that was just in her way of protecting me because she didn't want me to think about him. Like, right, She's right. like, listen, he ain't coming back. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. he did. So but it's instead of me asking her, like, where's my dad? She just, like, cut nipping in the bud. Yeah. So I understood why she did that, but... Don't be waiting around for it. Yeah, don't back. don't yeah. just go on with your life, Tyler. Basically, yeah. so because he really he was dead to me. I, I didn't know. I didn't see him. I didn't, you know. Yeah. But I, I met him, 13, 14, and really started to started to get to know him around fifteen, and uh, I didn't have any bitterness towards him. We actually, uh, he was kind of successful. You know, he actually now that I got to know him, he it was such a a crazy time in his life when he had me and my brother that he didn't know what to do. And he came from a structured family. So Hmm. him being a young man, he was in college and his dad, he knew he lived with his dad. His dad had, was like a blue collar worker. You're going to go to school. You're going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And for him, he had kind of been getting in a little trouble for him to come home and say, dad, I'm having a child. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it wasn't even my girlfriend. And then I'm having twins, <laughs> you know, like just think I, I can only imagine the conversation that the, what went through his mind when he got the call, Hey, I'm pregnant, you know? So I understand what he did. So he went to the military. He did, he, you know, he just went to the military. Gotcha. Uh, he stayed in there for a long time, got out, moved to Texas. Cause he's from uh, Ruston, Louisiana, got out and moved to Texas and started to create a life here. And actually, come full circle, I'm living in one of his homes now that he first moved here in, and I'm living in it basically for free. Wow. So 
even though he wasn't there when I was young, he was there when I needed it most. Yeah. And especially he was there when I was in high school because he got me my car, my first car. Uh, and that was just something. And like I said, that was something I never – I even though I knew my mom couldn't buy me a car, I just knew I was going to get a car. Like, it wasn't a thought in my mind, like, you know, all y'all had cars. Like, everybody had cars at West Monroe. It's like, I'm going to get a car. Yeah. And I just – I didn't know how, but I ended up getting a car. I ended up getting a Pontiac Sunfire. He bought me a Pontiac Sunfire. Yep. Then I ended up like, it's like, I really didn't like the Sunfire. You know, I'm still being like, I'm like, nah. Because everybody else had it, it trucks. Wasn't, it wasn't popping. It wasn't popular <laughs> at all. Everybody else had trucks and just all kind of stuff. So yeah. I ended up manifesting a Mercedes truck. Yeah. Uh, then my grandma, it was, she had, it had broke down on her. She bought a new car, and it was sitting up for, like, six months. Okay. And I just asked. She couldn't get it fixed at all. Then I, uh, she told me I could have it, and a week later, it was fixed. And I had that, and that was, like, the best thing ever. I remember you popping up in that thing, and it's like, where the hell did you get exactly. this thing Exactly. Like, from? nobody. I it's like to, my grandma gave it to me, and I was just like, <laughs> all right, right whatever. Right. And I used to just, I used to. I don't know how I used to get stuff, bro, but it was all through now from what I know now to yeah. be law of attraction. I just For always sure. believed like my even with shoes and clothes, I don't I'm telling you, I don't know how. Like people used to think I had money. Mm -hmm. You know, like no if you didn't know, you probably would think like, man, this this he must come from a good family or yeah. something like that. And although I did come from a good family, I didn't come from a uh, affluent family right. at all. Wealthy you know? so, family, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, that was a, a so big, I guess big thing. Your dad being over here did that motivate you to come over here, or is it did? But I didn't. So, see, when I moved here, so this is what happened in in December of 2018. I was meditating, and I got up, and I just had this feeling it's my intuition it's just like it's time to go because i i was too comfortable like i was i was just i had a lot of i had what i considered to be financial comfort you know i, I didn't i wasn't living i, I could have taken off two months if i wanted to i wasn't living paycheck to paycheck i was i was good yeah but i wasn't doing what i wanted to do i wasn't i wouldn't even tell people i was a barber like i didn't i hated to say that like i could hear i just it just felt even though that's a Especially in in, the, in 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 my culture, barbers are like the top. Right. Like it's a cultural thing. Like barbers, if in that world you make a lot of money, you can make a lot of money. Uh, you can really be well off, but that just wasn't my. I mean, you can ruin somebody's day. You can ruin somebody's day. You can make somebody's day, but ultimately you can, only you can kick them out and exactly, tell them never come exactly. back. Like, and it's all you. Like, right. It's not like he's going to go and say. Tyler Kane gave me a shitty haircut. Exactly. Like, prove it. Like, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Looks like your shit grown out to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, man, uh, ultimately, I only started cutting hair because my mom was a beautician, and I just used to be in the barbershop all day. So I was a sponge. Yeah. Whatever I saw, I would study. I would just look, and I'm like, I can do that. And I just figure out how to do it. And ultimately, that's how I started cutting hair because I just wanted to challenge myself to see if I could – do it yeah and then ultimately i wanted to do it because my barber wasn't doing it how i wanted it done and i wanted to do it you know on myself for sure for sure so yeah that's why i started cutting hair and i, I just knew it wasn't uh it wasn't me it wasn't what i want what i saw myself doing but i start i just thought of it as like okay at least i'm a businessman at least i work for myself but uh yeah that was i didn't it was that was basically it with that so so did you already have something lined up over here? Or you just oh no oh I'm sorry I didn't no, even touch on that. I didn't have anything lined up over here. I didn't I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I was going to trust my intuition, like because I knew that was God speaking to me. It was like you got to leave. Well, I mean, I knew you posted something. You're like we're we're leaving. Like not sure you where yeah. yet. Not sure the specifics yet, but yeah, like I'm I'm I made speaking the it out there. Like month. we're getting out. Yeah. So I made it like the end of December. And in January, we were planning to move in February, the beginning of February. So I told my wife, I was like, we're about to go. Yeah. And uh, she was like, okay, let's do it. Even though she was bluffing the whole time. Like, because when we got here, I figured out how scared she was. But she 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 did very well. Uh, I mean, kids were in school. Yeah, they were point? in school. Uh, we took them out of school. Yeah. And we brought them in another school. 
but I just had to go. I, I knew it was time. It was time because I think I believe I could know if you stay comfortable for too long, you'll start to decline. And I had maximized what I could do in Monroe. And uh, I knew it was time to leave. I, I knew it. I just felt it. And that's what that hunch was. That intuition was like, leave. So sure. I texted my dad, and I was like, I think we're about to move out there. And he was like, fine, let's go. As I, you know, whenever I make a decision, especially like that, like I said, law of attraction, that's law of attraction. All the cooperative components will be lined up. For sure. Then my dad was lined up. He actually uh, was – has another house that he uh stays at with his uh fiance and uh so yeah i moved down here and i didn't have anything lined up i had some money saved up uh before we left we took like a seven thousand dollar hit to lost seven thousand dollars uh and that was kind of that kind of scared me too. I was like, oh no, nah, maybe this not. Uh, yeah. But then I was like, no, nah, I'm not. Just because just some something. Yeah, 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 yeah. A kink in the in your exactly. plan. Yeah, exactly. for sure. But that was just like a test to see if I was, in my opinion, that was a test to see if I was gonna react from fear or my knowing that God provides. You know? Yeah. So I acted off the knowing, of course. Got here, a month went by. I was so uncomfortable. Because it was the first time, first of all, it was the first time that I had ever been out of Monroe for over a week. And second of all, it was the first time that I wasn't making money. And I had to make some money. Like, yeah, yeah I got three kids. and But I was trusting it. I was, I, I was so uncomfortable. But every day I was meditating, telling myself, like, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. Stop it. You know, every day I just had to focus on what I had. And at that moment... No matter how, if I looked into the future, how it seemed, like, no way this is sustainable, Tyler. Like, you, like, if, if I was, if someone is looking at you right now, they will be calling you stupid. Because no way this is sustainable. Yeah, yeah. You're spending $800 a week. Seven, you know, it's like, no way this is sustainable. And uh, it, I mean, but I wouldn't, I did not let my mind go there. No matter how much it wanted, and it wanted to so much. It wanted to look at the future so much. Each day, I would focus on, okay, do I have enough today? Yes. And that's, uh, and that's as far as I could do. That's as far as I could take it because if I thought, if I thought about the future, I probably, would, I probably would be back in Monroe right now. And that was four months ago. I probably would, leave, would have lived. So that was in February, the whole month of February. I was just adjusting. I didn't know where to work out at. I didn't know what to do. It was just like my whole – I had to get a new routine. New routine. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know anybody. Uh, so then I started – I was like, you know what? I'm just about to just I, – oh, I was watching Lewis House. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a, he's a big podcaster. I'm sure you'll start figuring out when you, you know, get your number one podcast <laughs> uh, who he is because he's like number one or whatever. Okay. Uh, he at he at the end of every at the end of every interview he asked the guest, so if you could leave something behind in life, what would you leave? And I was like, damn, I don't know. So I opened up my laptop. I was like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna leave my children for when I die. This is the rules that I need them to know about life, just in case you know I'm not here when I'm not here anymore. Yeah. And I want this to be passed down from generation to generation. And I was just writing the list. And then the list got a little long. I'm like, you know what? I'm about to turn this into a book. Yeah. So that's, uh, I remember I started writing the first day of the spring solstice, March 20th. My wife's birthday is uh, the 19th, so it's the day after her birthday. The first day, I actually started writing a book. Uh, and it was so hard, man. Oh, my goodness. It was so hard putting that stuff together. And then I didn't want to work on it too much because if I I had to balance working on it out of love and working on it out of fear. Because I was in a state of where I was losing money, and I was like, man, I need to do something. Yeah. But I, did, I only wanted to work when I felt inspired to work because that's truly – like right now in my life, I literally don't act from a, a low energy because I, I know what that brings. For like, sure. You know, so I – 
every everything that's something that, I've been struggling with myself. Okay, yeah, it's that, like it's hard, man. Yeah. It's hard. But it's like I, I see it whenever I do this podcast. Like sometimes I'll wait to the last minute to upload it, mm-hmm. and so like I'll be worn out from working all day and working out or whatever, and just be like, but I, you can tell, like, yeah, uh, it's, it's it just, shows. Yeah, yeah, it's the intro, and it's like, all right, well, you know, uh, this is blah blah. And, but you know, the other times I'm just, like jacked up, like, yeah, man, uh, it's, it's kind of like stuff, it's kind of like we're working out, like. You work out every day, your body's gonna be drained. Yeah. You give yourself those two days to recover, then you come back. You even, you're probably even stronger now. Yeah. A lot of people uh, nowadays we just built no sleep, no sleep. Mm-hmm. Gotta grind, gotta yeah, grind, yeah, gotta yeah, grind. Yeah. And that's that's good, but you also have to know when to rest because resting adds to the to pro, you know progress just as much as work does. For sure. You know, and just as much as force does. And people have to make sure they have that balance. But it's hard to find that balance because your mind will be telling you, why are you being lazy? Like, stop being lazy. Go work. Yeah. But you got to go not with what your mind is telling you, but how you feel. For sure. And if you don't feel, because your feelings are much more powerful than your intellect. If you don't feel good to do it, don't do it. You need to wait for that inspiration because when inspired work is always the best work. No doubt. Not the work where you feel like, the people who make the most money are the people who are inspired to go to work. They're having fun. Not the people who are going to work because they have to go to work. The people who make the most money are the people who wake up and say, I get to go to work. You know, so. For sure. It's the it's that thing. So you start writing. Not saying, I'm not saying that money is the the thing that everybody wants, but let's be honest now. It helps. A, it helps. It definitely <laughs> helps. So you start writing this book. Were you looking for jobs or? Is that- I wasn't. I was under the. So. I remember when I was 18, I said I wasn't working for anybody. And now, as you know, that's changed. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't looking for a job because I was just under the impression that somebody was, got, somebody was going to notice me. I was about to – I just I just always expected something mis- mystical, something just amazing <laughs> to happen because that's just usually how it happens for me, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and I think it happens like that for me not because of – who I am is because of that belief. Because I've I just believe that. Yeah. Uh and so I okay, long story short, I'm going through, I ended up finishing finishing the book. I put it out. Uh it's selling, but not selling. It's called Starting Point. So, yeah, it's called Starting Point, a, a map to help you along your spiritual journey. It's on Amazon uh right now. You can get it in the paperback or ebook form or ebook form. Uh it was selling, but with that, I don't you don't really get you don't really get paid to every 60 days with royalties from books. So uh, I wasn't necessarily looking to make money from it. I was looking at helping people and the opportunities that it would bring. Cause I just wanted people to know what I was about. Yeah. So this is a book. I think a book is a, a first introduction to, cause ultimately like I coach people now, I don't charge anything right now. I just like to do it from just helping and, uh, a lot of stuff. So if you, a lot of people uh, contact me on Instagram and Facebook, ask me all type of questions about health, spirituality, business, and all type of stuff. And I, I make sure I answer them, or you know, try to give them videos that help them and stuff like that. So uh, I've definitely been doing that for a long time, but it's just. Um, yeah, bro, I, I, I kind of forgot what I was. Oh, you good? You good? <laughs> so uh, it's something that you you mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, you talked about you you kind of had the opportunity to go coach at ULM. Mm-hmm. We decided that that wasn't where you needed to go. Uh, I mean, obviously, I see you coaching your son, you know, running drills and yeah. stuff. Uh, was that something that you did as a kid, doing drills like that? I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Really. No, not really. I didn't. Mine was so natural. I, yeah. And that's the thing. If that would have made – if I would have had that, I definitely would have went to the NFL. Yeah. But – I'm so thankful I did not go to the NFL. Like that would that's what I'm thankful for that I didn't have. Like a dad like me. Because I don't want to play football. Like I don't anymore. And that's crazy to say because I used to love it so much and I still do, but that would have definitely pushed me over the edge to get to the NFL because that's all I really needed. Was uh someone to work with me, someone to show me stuff. Cause everything I had was natural. Like I didn't nobody taught me anything. So um uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't do any drills or anything like that, but what I did do is I played football every single day, which is, you know, which is almost I don't even think it's almost it's actually better than drills 
because you're actually playing it. And I was in action. That's why basketball players are very good at you know what they do because they do it every day. Yeah, professionals. If you you know if you if you're especially a lot of I don't know how old you people are that's gonna watch this football players, basketball players, uh, welders. I don't care what it is. Like do the thing that you're actually so gonna do instead of like working on la- you know football. A lot of football players do ladders and soccer players do ladders. Like no, bro. Like go play a soccer. Go get some people. Get a game going. Like yeah. work on it in live action. That's how you. That's how you become better at what you actually do. For sure. You know. So, but yeah, I definitely. Uh, I didn't have that as a kid, but yeah, I definitely. I'm on my. I'm on my son about that. Not too hard. I was a, at first. Uh, I had to balance that. I was just thought I was just being a good black dad. Like I got to be hard on my son. Uh, it's kind of actually living. Uh, was kind of insecure i was i had some i had a child young so i was just doing what i thought i was supposed to do right and train him hard and, and actually developed him very well at a young age but now i'm backed off a lot like i'm way i'm way more relaxed i well, i mean you also grew up yourself from 18 exactly, to 26, exactly. So, so now i just i really just don't i don't even train him that much now if if he wants to i right, do but yeah. other than we work out in the morning, but other than that, it's just go 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 have some fun. So uh, I mean, you mentioned you don't want to play football anymore. Do you think that some of that joy comes from seeing him play football? <sighs> All of it comes from seeing him play yeah. football, and a lot of anger too. But I gotta <laughs> get that's what I'm starting to get away from that anger because I at one point I caught myself being that dad. Yeah. From the sideline, that's and, and shit. If we've <laughs> seen him, man, you God, know, like, please. and I and. It, Man, and I but never I seen like I've I've gone to some motocross races and stuff. Yeah. You used I mean, to do that uh, when you were younger, huh? I know my cousins did. Oh, okay, but, like, okay, okay. I, I kind of grew up around it. So I was out there last weekend, and I mean these kids are like six and seven. I mean just getting screamed at. Yeah, while man. They're riding around the track, I'm like, dude, they 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 not even like have the the enough like confidence to be able to exactly, do that exactly exactly like the wherewithal to withstand all that stuff mm-hmm. but and uh yeah man that's just parents living out living a lot of through a lot of insecurities wanting to be recognized through their child like i don't want you to mess up it's really it's really a, inse- a deep insecurity within the parent yeah and i'm only saying that because i was that parent and uh but i'm not like that anymore because I, I i realized and i was like man my, my son used to be in the games he do something and would look at me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my, he can't. He's not even playing. He's yeah. playing for me now. He's not even enjoying the game. Right. And I had to. Once I saw that, luckily I was conscious enough to notice it, because that stuff, stuff like that, puts a wedge in the future relationships with your children. So no doubt. No yeah, doubt. we're much better now. So cool. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll kind of start to wrap this up. Um. What what do you what are your goals for for the future for the next five ten years? I mean, you I know you probably want to write another book and and you trying to start life coaching and yeah. I, I mean you're the strongest vegan I vegetarian yeah. <laughs> I know so I I feel like you could take your life a, a bunch of different ways. What what are your what are your hopes and goals and dreams? What are you shooting for? All right, so I mentioned David Meltzer uh, before and uh, he asked me what I wanted and that was my homework. So he's coaching me right now and thank. Like I said, this guy's net worth is upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars. He offered to coach me and be my mentor for free. Uh, and he asked me that question, like, what's, what do you want? And like I said, I couldn't really say it, but now I've formulated it into an idea, into a thought. And it's, now I know it's going to crystallize into reality. So my goal is to help a lot of people. Have a lot of fun and have and make a lot of money. And the reason I want to make a lot of money is to help a lot of people. Because when I'm helping a lot of people, I'm having a lot of fun. And when I'm having a lot of fun, it's probably because I'm making a lot, a lot of, of money. money. You know, so <laughs> for sure. That's my goal, man. And uh I just know I'm on that path now. And uh I'm doing it now. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I'm doing that now, but it's like I said, I'm just maximizing it more. This is a very big year for me. This move was very fundament, fun, uh, fundamental towards my progress and just getting outside my comfort zone. Like I and I, I like I said before we get off, I just want to uh, say this: you have to get outside your comfort zone in order to grow. And I was so against this before this year. 
I was the one who was like, no, discomfort means that I'm like out of the flow. That's what I thought. I thought discomfort meant like I'm doing it wrong when it's actually a good thing for you, discomfort. Now, you shouldn't be dis, dis, uh, uncomfortable in your mind, but if your environment is showing you discomfort, it usually means because you're growing. All you have to do is change your perception, and you will reap the benefits of it. But if you're comfortable too, not, too comfortable right now, just just push for things that are going to make you uncomfortable. I don't care if it's a cold shower, if it's a new workout, if it's going to talk to somebody just ran in public, just – if you're afraid of rejection, go do it because you're going to grow from that. And uh, I think that's very important. So this is coming from a person who who was totally obliged to it. But now I kind of look for discomfort now. Like I, I kind of want it now for sure. because I, I understand that I understand what it brings. And it just it brings out the animal in me, man. And, and it just I like to feel like that. So yeah, I, and I and I believe it will do the same with everybody. It's scientifically proven. No doubt. I mean, I. <clears throat> I've been starting to dive into that mentality more mm-hmm. and more, and you know, I can do whatever the hell I want to. Like, I can do whatever I put my mind to. And yeah, man. That's that's kind of the whole of me getting back into running and and pushing the podcast. And I mean, straight up, you're the first black guy on here. You know, I mean, I had yeah. I had Alexis Belton on here a couple weeks ago. Oh, for real? Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, I mean, there's there's probably some people that see this and be like. Dang, they had a black guy on there. Yeah. Like that's different. Yeah, and, that's, I mean, and that's that's what it's about, man. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, and I st- that's my motto from the beginning is like I am still figuring this whole deal out. But it's a lot of like stepping out of my comfort zone, and uh, you know, I I am very aware that I'm ignorant to a whole bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. but I'm also I want to know that you know yeah. I at least want to be experienced yeah. to it. That's what's up. Dude. And uh, and so I think that you know every day is is a part of that. And uh, it's it's not something that I, I seek out every day. Especially I don't know. I just think about people see a, a white guy, a black guy here, and it's like a race is a big thing mm-hmm. in the South and and a lot of stuff. And it's like I said, I, I told you before. Like if I say some ignorant shit, I want you to call me out on it. Mm-hmm. And it's just because like I I, I don't want to be ignorant anymore. Right, right, right. And, definitely, uh, definitely. and uh, I don't know. It that all stems from growing up flying Confederate flags and like yeah. that not being racist to our school, but it it is to the world. Yeah. And like you know, there's a lot of stuff that uh, you just didn't understand. It's like yeah. I I just don't know, and that's why I don't blame anybody for like. But people used to drive by Timbers all the time with Confederate flags. Niggers! Like, all yeah. that type of stuff. Like, we were kids outside just playing, and they would drive by doing that. But it never made me bitter towards white people. Yeah. Because, I, like, I had a lot of white friends. Right. You know, so you knew I just, there was good and bad I, in the Yeah, world. I just, I just, I just kind of was like, oh, okay. I just knew not to mess with some certain white people, but I never judged all white people based on one white person for sure you know and that was a that was a big thing for me growing up in life and it has helped me to today because i can interact with anybody yeah i can go talk to the poorest kid from here whose dad is a drug dealer and his mom is sick or the richest white kid in america and i can we can have a conversation well it's funny that you bring that up because like i've seen you and i know you have like multiple personalities Mm -hmm. and you can like (laughs) swap in and out of different things and and I, I I know that you probably use that to your advantage sometimes. All you know, the time. you can you can put your big grin on and hey sir, how are yeah, you today? Yeah, definitely, you know? definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and then you can roll up and and see everybody else and and you know fit in just like uh, yeah. I just and that's I've and that's, always admired that about uh, you. I guess it's yeah, like f- I mean I didn't uh, for a while for a real long time I didn't understand it. I was like man this dude's just making fun of people and and I think you know you are having fun with it to right, some degree. Right, 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 right. And, and there you definitely c- can go over the top with it. But. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I'm definitely like a big jokester, but I definitely uh I definitely can adapt to any situation that I'm in. I don't, and I, I used to think of, I used to think of that in a negative way. I was like, man, I'm being fake. Yeah. Like, man, I'm being so fake. And in a sense, I am. But really, it's just to make the other person a little more comfortable. You know, because I'm gonna be comfortable. I don't care how you speak. Yeah. What who you are, I don't care. But I know to make you more comfortable with me, 
I I'm gonna meet you. I'm like I'm just gonna meet you at your level. You are gonna call me Daniel because you yeah, know you know, yeah, name, Daniel right? Richard Maver. You know, yeah. so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call you. You know, if you was black, I'm like, what up, D? Yeah, you know, but yeah, you know, sure. but other it's just who I, it's just who I'm with. You know, yeah. and I think I think that's a big thing uh, with being a leader, uh, just being able to uh, interact and being able to communicate with all different ethnicities, races, all different types of professions. And that's what I, you know, I definitely pride myself in. So cool. Well, we're gonna wrap it up right there. Yeah, man. Uh, man, I gotta say, I, you know, I've known you for a long time, and I'm proud of you, proud of what you're doing, and uh, I know you're an incredible leader for your family and and for a lot of other people in the world, and uh, you bring me inspiration on a regular basis just Appreciate by it, by spreading your message and, and and grinding and and being open with it. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I just I've always always had love for you and. Uh, respect you and and look forward to to what you're doing in the future and man i know we could sit here and talk about fitness and dieting for two hours so, so much yeah we'll so have much. to we'll have to do that some other time and uh last thing man i i i finally forgiven you i don't know if you remember oh man i think we're in fourth grade you had we we voted we went against some for some president medallion or governor oh, yeah. governor medallion uh-huh. thing and you beat me. Okay. And I was so distraught. Cause I was like, damn, I, nobody I thought everybody liked Dude, me. Dude, did like, I have that little hat on? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah, man. I finally forgive you. Okay, I I'm, appreciate and I'm, that. And I'm and I'm glad that we're doing the podcast. Yeah, for man. sure. Well, I assure you, you uh you out accomplished me in a whole yeah. bunch of things. So. so I guess we're you know, I guess we're even. We're so. even for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, we'll definitely catch up with you down the line for sure. All right, man. Appreciate it, Dan. For sure. Thank All you. All right, everybody. Peace.